what are the factors and the models underlying abnormal behavior so let's understand these factors first under the factors we say either these factors can be genetic in nature or biological in nature genetic are those factors which are linked mainly to mental retardation mood disorder schizophrenia and these are carried from generation one generation to the next generation it is believed that there is no one single gene which is responsible for psychological disorders to occur but there have been strong cases to believe that genetic displacements have been seen across generations the next is the biological factors biological factors overall influence all the kind of human behavior there are wide varieties of biological factors it can be related to genes it can be related to endocrine system it can be related to malnutrition it can be related to uh, let's say any physical injury that a child had in the childhood so all these are part of biological factors according to the biological factor theory uh, the reason behind this is when the messages are transmitted in the neurons there is a synapse now the tiny space which is called a synapse separates one neuron from the next neuron so the nerve ending used to stimulate one neuron to the next neuron is through the neuron transmitters now if the neurotransmitters which lead to a specific signal has been disturbed there could be reasons that biological factors come into play for example in the patients who have higher level of anxiety lower levels of gaba are seen in the patients of schizophrenia higher levels of dopamine are seen however in the patients suffering from depression lower levels of serotonin are seen so those are some of the ways we understand how neurotransmitters play a important role in understanding the biological factors and the reason behind the abnormality so these are the factors that lead to abnormal behavior now what have been the models we would understand six models today and based on these models we have the six therapies these models are the psychodynamic model based on which we would understand how psychodynamic therapy works the behavioral model based on which we have behavioral therapies of reinforcement conditioning operant and classical conditioning which is seen cognitive uh, models which focus on cognitive therapies ruling out the irrational belief humanistic existential therapy uh, model which focuses on developing a integrated self and ruling out uh, the concepts of fragmented personalities then we also have socio cultural and diathesis stress theory so all these psychological models are important what are the reasons behind psychological disorders now we do not have one single reason that we can quote there could be a uh, lots and lots of variety of reasons that could be sought for example a child who is orphan there could be a probability of insecurity in the mind of the child maternal deprivation where separation of parents at a early age witnessed by a child could be one of the reasons if there is faulty relationship between a parent and a child this could be a trigger for psychological disorders sometimes over protection of the child and sometimes over a uh, uh, a uh, kind of uh, over uh, pessimistic relationships could be one of the reasons for it or if the families are disturbed there is lot of quarrel lot of struggle within the families these are some of the triggers for having psychological distress or psychological disorders to begin with the first model the psychodynamic model which is one of the oldest and the most popular models it is believed that human beings suffer from unconscious mental conflict they do not want to or have it in mind but still they have it in mind so let's say a person who has a feeling of uh, getting into a good job and buying let's say a car would go into a unconscious mental conflict if the person is able to get a good job but because of let's say traffic problems or the city in which they are placed 
they are happy with the public transport and do not want to go for a car so there could be a unconscious mental conflict that can generate at this point of time the internal forces that come into play are very very dynamic in human mind and therefore it's very difficult to understand why a person behaved in a certain manner at certain point of time according to freud our human personality is composed of id ego and super ego so freud said that a uh, a abnormal behavior is simply symbolic of the unstructured integration of these three forces of id ego and super ego that we have understood in our classes on freud's personality theories the next is the behavioral model now as mentioned behavior is what we do our actions if there is a faulty action because of a faulty learning a faulty thought a faulty knowledge a faulty uh, learning pattern is generated and this leads to a maladaptive behavior a behavior which is not well adapted among the uh, among the settings this can be ruled out as mentioned before through conditioning modeling the role models that you believe have been successful the person tries to imitate and reduce the maladaptive behavior in certain cases reinforcement classical and operational uh, operant conditioning works well the next is a cognitive model here cognitive problems are taken into account why person thinks illogically why there have been over generalizations that are done so a person might probably repeatedly think illogically and this can be ruled out by a cognitive model the cognitive model helps understand or assume that there is certain reason behind this illogical belief if, if a person says that i am not wanted i am ugly there is a conflict a mental conflict a irrational belief that is into existence the next is understanding the humanistic existential model now as mentioned humanistic and existential two words for which it is composed of human beings as a personality should be very very integrated a integrated means a complex personality where all the things are much more balanced and the personality is not fragmented when i say humanistic the person is born with a natural tendency to be friendly to be cooperative and to self actualize when i say existential that means there is a freedom to give meaning to our existence or uh, avoid the other responsibilities in certain cases now sometimes if a person tries to avoid responsibilities there could be a dysfunctional life the person at one point of time in the life would avoid the responsibility but would regret about it at later point in the life and therefore feel that this was not authentic this was not correct what i did and this would create a question on existence why i am so so there is where we have the humanistic existential model as mentioned i repeat again humanistic indicates since we are human beings we are friendly we are cooperative and we focus on being an integrated balanced self existential always question about the existence why we actually exist and what are our responsibilities the next is the socio cultural model socio cultural model where society plays an important role it could be family it could be peer group it could be the social networks the social scenarios the condition and the social labels that have been put on certain segments of the society so if the person the scientific study says that if people are isolated they do not have a good social support system they do not have good interpersonal relationship it is highly probable that later in the life they can become more depressed more aloof so having good friendships and friendly relations are essential in order to reduce the level of anxiety and depression in later stages so interpersonal relationships should be good and the personality should not be deviant away from the normal the last is 
the diathesis stress model the most widely accepted model it has three components first of all this develops a diathesis diathesis means a biological predisposition to a disorder which is triggered by a stressful situation for example if a person is put into a stressful situation a person might start eating a lot and this is a diathesis a biological predisposition to a disorder and that is triggered by higher amount of stress so what are the three components first is some biological aberrations are inherited so they could be inherited from the genetic makeup so that is the first component there can be genetic sequence or genetic chain of that biological aberration or the biological pattern that can be seen the second is the vulnerability vulnerability says how vulnerable you are to take the stress whether you are actually prepared you have an integrated personality to deal strongly with the stress or with just a small amount of stress you get very very distracted so what would happen when a huge stress would come so vulnerability explains how probable it is that a person could go into a psychological disorder or we can say how predisposed or at what risk a person is to a biological uh, psychological disorder the third component is further important which is identifying the presence of stressor what kind of stressor is there and what kind of stressor creates a trigger so this could be a trigger for a situation of anxiety depression or schizophrenia but identifying that stressor is important and under the diathesis stress model identifying the presence of this stressor and understanding the vulnerability of the client is very very essential